Hey everybody, Scout Crafter here again. Uh, I got an announcement. Uh, I just recently got another job. Uh, I'm going to have to relocate and I won't be able to be making videos for the next uh, two or three months. Uh, I'm going to be re relocating to a, uh, a different area. <laughs> that was my bad attempt at a uh, April Fool's prank. <laughs> April Fool's and uh, today is uh, April Fool's Day. And uh, it's Friday, TGIF. I hope you're having a great day. Hope you're having a great week. And yes, of course, most of you knew that uh, right away that I'm not going to be working again. <laughs> I'm done with work. And it's not because I, I don't enjoy work. I've been working since I'm 13 years old. I, I love to work. I love to be busy and do things. I just don't like to have bosses. That's all. You know, and, and even I don't want to work for myself because I'm probably be my worst boss, right? The worst boss I ever had would be myself. Anyway, we got a few things to do today. A couple things to talk about. Uh, got some light bulbs to take apart. Got a little project. So let's get started right away. Okay, next up, we have a very interesting knife here. A little backstory to these type knives. Now, these knives were big back in the late 60s and early 70s. Uh, what they were, they were imported knives, usually from Japan. And uh, what they were was a, a camp knife. They were kind of uh, uh, advertised as being a camping knife, a multifunction knife. You could see here it had uh, a spoon, a fork. It had a uh, can opener, bottle opener, a saw, scissors, two fixed blade knives, a corkscrew that has been broken off here, and then uh, a leather punch, a file, and a nail file maybe, and another awl. Okay, so um, it was, they were interesting. They were inexpensive. When we were kids, 15 years old, you know, you had this, you felt like, wow, this is a cool multi-tool, like the Leatherman back in the day, you know, when you were just starting to carry knives. And I remember I had one of these when I went into Scouts, you know, I guess all the young kids would buy or something like this. But what happened was um, I had one that was in nice shape, you know, no rust. And uh, when my nephew was born, this is 30 years ago, I, I buried it in a time capsule in, uh, in Flushing Meadow Park, not far from the uh, New York State World, uh, the New York State Pavilion, you know, where they film Men in Black. There is a time capsule there and I buried my time capsule not far from it. And uh, it's still there. I buried this. I buried a whole bunch of stuff in a capsule. I went there. and <laughs> So, uh, this I always said this is a cool thing. It's still in there. We got to go there one day with my nephew and dig it up, that time capsule. Buried that back in, you know, I guess, 1990 or something, whatever it was. Anyway, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to dip this in. Now, this is a perfect candidate for Evaporust. Because it doesn't have wood scales, so you don't have to worry about the wood scales, even with evaporust, they swell, whatever. This is a plastic type scale, so this should do really well in the evaporust. We're going to dip it in, and then we're going to just clean it up and uh, see how this comes okay, out. Okay, next up, uh, you know how I kind of tell you, I push these bulbs. These are available at Dollar Tree. They're dollar store bulbs, and these, I, I, I can't understand how they can make this bulb for the price. Of course, it's made overseas, but one dollar, well now a dollar 25, I think all the dollar stores are gone, but a dollar 25, uh, this one's a 100 watt equivalent. Um, it's a little bit brighter than I, as far as color goes. I like 2700 Kelvin, which is a little bit warmer light. This one here uh, comes in at 3000. You can see here, which is fine. It's like a halogen light. I use them all over. They're great, right? But what happened was a couple of years ago, uh, a tree, my tree branch, remember the tree branch? It fell on the wire and shorted out my whole, you know, my whole, I sent like 480 volts through the whole house and blew out all the bulbs I had. So I had the bulbs here, um, over here as a matter of fact. And I said, you know what? Let me take some apart to see what kind of damage now, was done. If you've done. never seen the way these LED bulbs are, are what's inside them, it's a plastic housing here. So the plastic housing comes off and it's it's very durable. I mean, I got to say, it's a durable plastic. You could drop it. They don't crack. Um, it is glued on with this type of a white silicone, which is very strong. I mean, it's very hard to get these apart. Then you have your arrays of... Um, I think these are called Cree lights, if I'm not mistaken. 
it's a type of LE light emitting diode. And anyway, they're cre over here. So you have, a, and you can see one is burnt out here, it looks like, right? But you have an array of these around here and all these plug in. So you see they plug in this whole unit just plugs in. So in reality, if you ever burnt out one, you could replace just this. I mean, not that you'd want it, they're so cheap, but so that's that, that's all the the lights. And in here is the electronics, it pulls out here. This is the heat sink and it's covered with a uh, a type of, and you can see here cracked from taking that, you know, that voltage and it, it split it. So I was looking at some of the damage because I'm always worried that's, you know, you don't want to set your house on fire with a cheap bulb, but these are indeed UL listed. Okay, anything with a UL certification is is good to go. And so here was the LED bulbs. This one took the full hit with the voltage and you could see very little damage, right? Very little circuit damage, a little bit over there. It looks like that wire right there. I'm sorry if I was off camera. That wire right there looks like it might be a little hot, but there's not much to this, right? But it looks okay. So that's that one. That's this. Now this one here, it's another type of bulb I like. Again, UL listed. This is called a bright stick and uh, it's made by GE, General Electric. You can see here, now this one comes off the same way the plastic cap pulls off. And again, this one has less of the LEDs. You can see here it only has uh, seven compared to the other one that, I don't know how many it has here. But this one is again, 27, uh, this one's 2700, I like the, but look, it, again, it, it plugs in. It just plugs in like that. You pull that off, this comes out. And you could see the damage here. Now this looks a little bit more extensive. You could see the heat build up. Okay, you can see the charring around the bottom here. Look at this. You see that charring? Now whenever you see charring or heat, that's no good. That means there was excessive heat. That, that's where a fire could start. So this one was absolutely fine. This one here took a little bit, uh, a little bit more before it it broke apart and uh and shut down or shorted out whatever the case may be but you can see the damage here and lastly we had uh the compact fluorescent this was in one of my uh one of my lamps upstairs you know these you know but look at the damage this thing took before it before it finally shorted out first of all look at all the circuitry in here again this is all it's only what five years technology difference between these two but look at the amount of circuitry in here compared to a a newer bulb the circuitry that's in there right but and also look at the damage look at the heat buildup that was here and so this one here was the most dangerous bulb to have as far as the way it looks as far as the, you know uh in the house when it when i was hit with that uh, short you know you see it's totally black in there it was a lot of heat in this thing and um you can also see uh some of the bulbs like this one here this was outside this is a very good bulb by the way it's a phillips dusk to dawn and this one turns on at night turns off during the day you don't have to hit any switches it's they're really good i use them all the time it has a little sensor here but you can see this one took the brunt of that look at the heat that was you know but again, these are all garbage, but I just thought it'd be interesting to see, you know, what kind of damage is done when you get that kind of voltage surge into your house with the bulbs. Okay, next up for our show and tell, uh, one of the things I used to do in the military was, uh, I was in a, a something called a state platoon, and we used to do all kinds of jobs. We were like light reconnaissance, we used to do uh, pathfinding, we used to carve out LZs, uh, all kind, whatever they needed us to do. We worked in small teams, and it was a, a fantastic position to be in. I loved it. Um, but uh, one of the things that we used to do, which was one of my favorites, is we would go out in small teams, and this is what's called a contour map, okay? And this is what a map would look like uh, when you would go out there. Now, if you've ever flown over um, areas that have no cities in it or in, in the in the total woods and the fields, it's no, you don't see anything. It's total black. And uh, because of that, 
they would send us out and uh, what we would have to do is we would pick if they wanted to have a landing zone right here that's the LZ if they wanted to have a landing zone here where let's say a helicopter was gonna pick up some people or whatever they would send us out ahead of time uh, to help guide in the helicopters now remember this is in the uh, in the 80s when before they had the, the, the GPS like they have now and everything and and like I said it's when you're over a hilly mountainous area it is totally black out there and you don't you could one mountain looks just like another when there's so many of them so they would send us out there and what we would do is uh, we'd separate like in a, a case like this we'd have three teams uh, and if they were going to come in from the south, you can see here, this is the north up here. So they're coming in this way. We put a, a green indicator on this mountaintop and then two blue on each mountaintop here. So when the pilot was coming in, uh, you know, they would fly in altitude and they could see there would be a green light and two blues. And they knew it was right there in the middle. And let me tell you, the pilots loved us. They, cause we made them look, you know, like all stars and so many times, you know, they would come up and they would want to, you know, <laughs> buy us lunch and stuff because uh, it's very difficult for you. And any of you guys that might have flown out there know you can't see anything out. So we would set up these uh, lights and, and uh, I wanted to show you one of the type of lights that uh, that was used. We used a different type. We used similar to the ones that I showed, like a, uh, a six volt can light. But this one here was issued to a lot of units just for jobs like this now like i said this is a little bit different than the ones we have but it to serve the same purpose and this is a new old stock and what this is it's a military signal light really interesting i love this kind of stuff um and what this would have you can see it, it came with a, a heavy duty bag okay and you would fill this and you can say it says filled with ballast before using so if you were you know on a beach or something you could fill it with sand or you could fill it with dirt whatever and then you would fold this flap over and uh and and shut it that way and now you had a weighted sack that you could put that the wind wouldn't blow it off especially if you weren't going to be in that area for a while if you were just going up to one setting it up and then leaving uh and then picking it up later on you would want to make sure that a strong wind or an animal or something couldn't drag this away so you would fill it with ballast and then it also came with stakes and uh, you would put the stake in each corner and the reason this is an orange one is because it could also be used during the daytime where they could possibly see this or you could have a bigger one um now how this would work is you could see here it has on off or flash and it came with different lenses okay you could see here we have a clear this is interesting because this one here let me take the plastic off it's clear it's blacked out this is called blackout so if you had that person coming in from the north that chopper and you didn't want anybody to see you from anywhere else you would point this towards the north and you could put it like that uh obviously it had amber it had red it had uh blue and then it had green so uh what you would do is you would uh this would come off you would push this on here and i'll show you how this operates pretty interesting i love this kind of stuff. now the inside of the light would look like this it came with a spare bulb many things did you had to have backup redundancy over there and, and this had a slight circuit board again for the flasher now everything kind of had to be idiot proof because if you were doing this at night you had to be able to do this without really uh being able to see you know as far as uh you, you had to be able to do this by feel a lot of times so let's uh hook up the green okay we'll put the green on so the green lens will go over here like this and again like i said you might be doing this at night uh so that's why you have this nib here this nib would fit in that hole so there was no guessing on which way this went down but this would all be set up you wouldn't be putting batteries in obviously uh you wouldn't be putting batteries in in the field. You would do this all before you uh, you left. But uh, then you would snap it down like that, and uh, and then check. And you can see it. We got power, and then here we have it on flash, and you can see the flash. Let me show you what that looks like in the dark. But uh, again, very interesting how these things work. Now here is the green one, and if you don't, this is extremely bright, especially if you're in the total darkness. This thing really would shine. So that's green. This would be clear. This here would be a blue, what the blue would look like. This here would be the red, the amber, and lastly, we have the, uh, this would be the blackout one. Notice how the light 
you could it totally blacked out from the back so very interesting little unit they still sell them you could still get them now speaking of the military you might remember this guy <laughs> part two i guess of the show and tell you remember this guy saddam hussein <clears throat> at one time he was like uh the most wanted man in all of Iraq, and uh, this here is the currency from back in the 80s, mid 80s, probably 86 or so. And uh, you see here, there he is, Saddam himself. And uh, you can see this was 25 dinars. Now I don't even the Central Bank of Iraq. It's a it's an attractive currency, right? I mean, it, you got to admit it's a beautifully uh, colorful currency. And uh, I don't know if it's. <laughs> It's probably not use, uh, not available to cash in now. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. It's going to be given away at Jacktown. Okay. I know what you're saying. A lot of you guys are going, damn, the damn Jacktown again. Well, I'll tell you what. I, uh, I have two of these. So you leave a comment in this video. I don't, you don't have to leave a comment. You can just leave a number or anything. Just, just make sure you're in the comments section. And uh, I'll pick a uh, somebody from the comments section. I'll send you one of these beautiful certificate of authenticity, <laughs> an original Saddam Hussein 25 dinar note. Okay? So you just, uh, in the comments, just leave a comment and I'll pick one next week and we will send it out to you. I think that's pretty cool. And also at Jacktown, you'll get one at Jacktown. Pretty cool, right? Okay, this is after 24 hours in Evaporust. And you could see if ever there was a product that was made for Evaporust, it's this. Because these knives had that kind of uh, surface rust that would build up. It wouldn't really pit too much, but this is perfect for removing that rust. Now, all we're going to do, and you could see it leaves like a little uh, film on the blades. We're just going to wire brush that off lightly. You can see here, this is like a, a, a coating, but we're going to go with a very light, fine wire brush, clean up the inside and uh, oil it up. We'll be back. Okay, you know my favorite part. Remember what this knife looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. Uh, this was kind of just a cleanup. And, and the reason is because, like I said, this one brings back a lot of fond memories. Let's take a look here. At, uh, at how nicely this came out. This is pretty much the original finish that was on the knife. It came like a, uh, it wasn't a shiny polished steel by any, and it was a raw steel. That's why it rusted. These always, every time you find these, you find them rusted. In fact, I remember when I got mine as a kid, it had a oiled coating on it, which I will do when I store this. I will be using my 50-50 mineral oil and Vaseline mixture. Uh, wipe the knife down and then store it like that. But uh, if you don't do that, the raw steel will rust up. But it, you see how nicely the evapor rust and a little bit of wire brushing uh, really brought this back to uh, to beauty. It's really a very simple restoration, and uh, and the scales on this really look nice, don't they? Um, you know, not damaged at all by any kind of liquid. That's what's nice about the plastic scales. Fun little project. These also came in a kind of a novelty type sheath, leather sheath that came, kind of folded over. So uh, I don't have that, but uh, I had that on my old one, I remember. And, and the one I buried for my nephew has it. So anyway, this one's in the can. Fun little project, and they always do come out nice. Something just to tuck away for years to come. I, and one day these will be collectible. Okay, so in closing, uh, fun little projects today, and uh, I hope you uh, please leave a comment, any comment at all, even just a number, anything just to put your name in the comments section so you get a chance, if you're interested, in winning that uh, piece of historical memorabilia, Saddam Hussein, 25 dinars, and uh, don't look at spending it, you know, it's kind of just to hold on as a souvenir. And thanks so much for tuning in, hope you have a great weekend, take care now, bye-bye. <laughs>